Welcome back to the Real Quick with Mike Swick podcast. Today we have Tagir Ulambakov on the show. He is a rising star in the Russian circuit, a former GFC champion, world champion, former Fight Nights world champion. He's 10-1 and one as a pro. Um, he's making his UFC debut next weekend at uh, Fight Night in uh, Yas Island. Um, and this is a continuation of our podcast series that we're doing covering Habib and his teammates. We've already had um, Abu Bakr, uh, Manap. Uh, he was already he was the first of the group, and this is Tagir, the second of the group. Uh, we're planning to still have Usman, Umar, um, Islam, and then an exclusive final uh, podcast with Habib and Javier for the first time ever. They're going to do a podcast together. So all that's coming up next. Hopefully, if nothing changes. Um, but to gear is gearing up for his fight. It's uh, approaching fight week after this weekend. So let's get to know to gear to gear. Welcome to the show. And, uh, Mr. Kerbatov, thank you for translating for us today. Thank you. Thank you. How's everything going over there in uh, Dubai? How's training? I know you have a fight this next weekend and it looks like it's the end of your camp and, and now it's fight week. Uh, ну, тренировки проходят хорошо. Я приехал сюда 10 сентября. До этого был в Лас-Вегасе, готовился там на бой. Так как мой соперник травмировался, я приехал сюда и готовлюсь с ребятами уже здесь. Все ребята, которые будут драться ну, в ближайшее время, они в очень хорошей форме. И тренер Хавер говорит, что я в хорошей форме. Ну, я сам тоже чувствую, что я в отличной форме yeah so he came on uh, 10th of September and before that he was preparing in Las Vegas but because his opponent got injured he came here to like continue his preparation for his next fight and uh, everything is fine coach says coach Javier says he's in a good shape and he feels this way he feels himself like in very good shape yes and uh, he hopes like uh, by god's will he will get a, a w and will get it to the dagestan yeah it's fun watching you guys over there but i'm talking to hav every day and and you guys have so much fun you know it's good you guys train so hard but you also have a lot of fun because there's so much camaraderie with you guys all like being like brothers and friends and close teammates so I'm jealous of like, I'm, I'm alone in Thailand here because everybody's gone and I'm jealous watching you guys. I'm like living vicariously through you guys. But how fun is it? Hang, I mean, I know you spent a lot of time with Habib growing up. How fun is it just hanging out and, and having camp aside from the hard training? Вот. И как вообще, каково это вот, там, вот быть в команде со своими братьями и тренироваться, то есть иметь возможность тренироваться и также как бы находить время, чтобы вот чуть веселиться, так скажем. Ну, это очень хорошо, когда не только вот да, тренировки, тренировки чуть-чуть, это все усугубляет, когда уже там шутишь, смеешься, немного интереснее будет тренироваться. И я здесь, я, я был до этого там в Лас-Вегасе, да, ну, там тоже были ребята, которых я знал, но эта команда, та команда, с которой я вырос, да, и шутки, и все, здесь я уже чуть по-другому, я приехал, и уже я понял, что я бываю в своей команде, здесь шутим, все, и так далее. Yeah, it's very good, uh, because like, when you train a lot, like, you know, it's, it's very hard, but when you, like, when you have fun, like, you know, you change the atmosphere, it's very good, and he was preparing at Las Vegas, and he was also with the guys he he knew like with his friends but when he came to dubai he like you know he started to feel that he's this is his team you know like he feels free he feels very comfortable here so i've seen your fight videos and your highlights man and you are you are a very good fighter you know former gfc champion former fight nights champion but this is your first ufc fight um how excited are you to actually fight in the ufc how much bigger of a step is this for you and how how much are you looking forward to this this fight coming up uh, next weekend? Он говорит, смотрел твои бои, хайлайты, нарезки, и ты бывший чемпион GFC, чемпион Fight Nights. Сейчас у тебя бой в UFC. Как ты вот настроен? Насколько ты воодушевлен? Насколько для тебя это шаг вперед? Ну, это можно сказать то, к чему я готовился, да, на протяжении всей моей спортивной карьеры. 
Я очень сильно мотивирован. Я, можно сказать, я не был никогда так мотивирован, чтобы подраться, выйти. Да? Я очень сильно мотивирован. Это моя такая маленькая мечта. И я сделаю все, чтобы она сбылась, и я выиграл этот бой. Yeah, that was his dream, and he is very much motivated. He has never been that motivated in his life for like as a, for this fight. So he will do everything that he can, he's capable of, to get the victory. So I've looked, I can't find his age. I don't know if it's like hidden or what, but a lot of the websites don't have his age. I know he started fighting it uh, in 2013. So I don't know mm -hmm. how old exactly uh, Tagir is, but... Um, I assume very young still. And and when was it when when he discovered like the UFC for the first time, like and saw saw the UFC and knew that that's what he wanted to do and 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 kind of pursued that option. Он говорит, что тяжело было найти твой возраст. Mm -hmm. uh, нигде вот на сайтах нет было твоего возраста, но он как бы предполагает, что ты молодой. И uh, когда вообще вот когда был первый раз, когда ты вот увидел UFC или подумал, что вот тебе нужно в UFC, когда это стало твоей мечтой вообще? Какой момент? Что, наверное, ну, я когда пришел первый к Адмуфу по Магомедовичу, я, у меня была рука сломана, я пришел просто реабилитироваться, да, и у меня не было такой, такого, чтобы я там когда-то буду драться в UFC и так далее. Все, что я умею, это Адмуфу меня, то, что, да, натренировал, да, и потихоньку, потихоньку он в меня так вкладывал и заставлял верить в меня, да, и в какой-то момент я поверил, что я смогу когда-то подраться в лучшие лиги мира. И вот сегодня, не сегодня, вот скоро уже я вступлю обеими своими ногами туда внутрь. So uh, he came to Abdulmanab with his arm broken and he was just going to do a rehab, but then when he started training, like Abdulmanab started giving him attention and he was like believing in him, he was training him, and then when he like built this belief, this confidence in his abilities and he started to grow, started to train more, compete. And from that, like uh, his dream became to, uh, to become a UFC fighter. And now he will step into the octagon soon and will do everything that he can. And for the viewers that don't know, that is, that is Habib's father. So uh, he, he came to Habib's father with an injury. Uh, and then, and then uh, what age was that? What age did he, did he uh, go, go there and, and uh, start training? How old did he go when he came? 16 years old. 16. And it was, was it Sambo? Yes. Sambo, yeah. I was doing it. No, I was Sambo. I won the championship in Russia, the championship of the world. Sambo. So then Mohamed Ajmi said, you need to switch over to MMA. Yeah, he was doing some combat sambo. He became Rus uh, Russian national champion, champion, then world champion, and then after that, uh, coach Abdulmanap he told him that he has to like fight professionally wow. and MMA. That's awesome. So I've, I assume that you've been hanging hanging very close to Habib since you were 16. How exciting has it been watching the rise of your friend in Dagestan become? probably the, the, the second most famous Russian in the world next to President Putin. Like, literally, like, he is so famous right now. How, how exciting has that been to watch and how motivating is that for you uh, as a fighter to follow in, in those footsteps? настолько известный, что его приравнивают как бы вот ко второму по популярности человеку в России после Путина. Вот, каково это вообще видеть это вот весь его путь и весь его вот рост, его развитие? Ну, я не знаю об этом, как сказать, но я так скажу, что Хабиб, да, он сейчас известный, все, все такое вокруг него, но несмотря на это, он такой же, каким был, когда я познакомился с ним, когда мне было 16 лет. Он очень простой, всегда так, был такой же всегда, да, всегда любил помочь братьям нам. Вот сейчас тоже мы здесь находимся, благодаря, можно сказать, Хабибу. Он делает все для нас, чтобы мы там... Ну, нам нужно только выигрывать, да, наши бои, и все. Хабиб был таким же, каким он, явля... каким он сегодня, да, вы его видите. Even though he became very popular, but like uh, Tagir is sure, he is the same Habib yeah. uh, met him when he was 16 years old. And at that time also he was trying always to help his friends, his brothers. And even now, uh, this all because of Khabib, uh, the way 
uh, the, like the place we train, the place we eat, everything is because of Habib and he always wanted to help. And from us, we just need to win our fights and that's it, like this is what we have to do. Speaking of success and then eating, um, obviously uh, Habib's father was an amazing man. Uh, Javier, also an amazing coach. But what is it you guys are eating over there is there some kind of secret like recipe that you guys are, I mean, all you guys are such animals and such beasts. Like, it seems like all of you are so good. Like what, is there some secret we don't know about? Он говорит, Магомедович говорит, очень хороший был тренер. Хавьер тоже очень хороший тренер. Но что вы, говорит, там, говорит, кушаете, говорит, и какой-то секретный, говорит, может, какой-то секретный ингредиент. Вы, говорит, тренируете. Let us in on the secret. Какой-то секрет есть, поделись. Нет, никакого секрета нет. Мы просто любим, да, это дело. Мы больше ничем не занимаемся, вот, тренируемся, все. Мы очень сильно мотивированы. Абаманов всегда нам говорил, нужно хорошо тренироваться. У него такая поговорка была для хорошо подготовленного коня, всегда найдется стадион или там что-то. Ипподром, да. Ипподром, да. Uh, yes, they just love it. They just love it and they do what they, you know, they do what they do. And uh, uh, Abdul Manap was saying that you have to train always, like you have to have a discipline. And there's a Russian saying that uh, if a horse is ready, they're gonna be a race for him, you know, like yes. for, 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 so they just stay ready. They always train, they, you know, they do hard work. Yes, I've never met you, Tagir, but knowing Habib and the rest of the guys, it's like that humble attitude and, and that, that hard work ethic, I, I think is definitely what's carried you guys through. I mean, like you said about Habib not changing, it's crazy, but it's true. He's the same Habib as, as I remember coming into AK in the very beginning and we didn't know who he was, you know, and, and he came in and, and now he's who he is. So, you know, that's, that's amazing. And, and, and I think there's uh, a lot to take from that. All right, guys, I got to thank our sponsors really fast. Manscaped, the official trimmer of the UFC and also the official trimmer of the Real Quick with Mike Swick podcast now. Uh, go to manscaped.com, M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D.com, enter code QUICK at checkout, and you will get 20% discount and free shipping. I think it's it goes without being said that they're the best below-the-waist men's grooming kit and product and brand on the market. So just enter QUICK, and then they know that I sent you, and I'm doing my job. And uh, then it works well for everybody, and you get 20% discount and free shipping. Um, also... Uh, this podcast is brought to you by AK Thailand, the world's premier luxury training resort in Phuket, Thailand, the world's highest rated destination gym resort. Um, we are still offering a 30% pre-booking discount right now for all group training. Uh, unlike some of the other discounts and similar gyms, we have no expiration date. So you can actually book now and use it in 2021, use it in 2022, 2023, whatever date you want to use it. There's no expiration date. When you get an RPOS, you are in there for life. Uh, so you can book one month, two months, three months, six months, a year. If you want to come for six months or a year, guys, we can help you get an education visa. So you can actually have a visa in our official Thai school. We're a Muay Thai school in Thailand. You'll be a student at our school. And we can actually get you a visa for six months or a year so you don't have to leave the country. You're 100% covered. Uh, any information that you need, email info at akthailand.com. If you want to see what the gym is, you haven't seen the podcast before, you haven't seen the commercial, you probably have if you're watching this. But if you haven't and you're curious what AK Thailand is, here is our official commercial. What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. Mike Swick, he's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here, AKA Thailand, is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jujitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything. telling you guys, I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool, but you can't come to Thailand without coming to AKA Thailand. Come on. Do 
do you know much about your opponent? You're fighting um, Bruno Silva for your for your first fight in the UFC. Do you know much about him, and are you preparing in any specific way? Um, I just want to say that, in fact, he was agreeing with him that Khabib is the same as как он пришел, uh-huh. он тоже его видел в АКА, вот и также он хочет спросить тебя, вот у тебя следующий соперник Бруно Сильва, знаешь уже о нем смотрел его бои вообще, как к нему подготавливаешься? Ну я готовлюсь, да, как и всегда, как обычно, ничего менять мы не стали, больше борьбы, больше ударки, а в сопернике, ну я не нашел так много боев его, один бой нашел, он такой любитель стойки, да, поработает. Вот, настойка тоже поработали. 10 октября все увидите сами. Uh, they didn't change the plan. It's the same plan. Mm-hmm. They train, they do more striking, more wrestling. He was able to find one fight of his uh, future opponent. Mm-hmm. And uh, from this fight he knew like, that he likes striking. And they've been working on striking too. So we'll see on 10th of October, you know, you will see everything. And speaking of striking, how is it working with Javier? How do you enjoy how you enjoy that? He's he's a he's a great man. He's he's went through my whole career with me, and just such a great striking coach and just a great personality. What 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 is your take on Javier? Говоря о стойке, как вообще тренироваться с Хавиером? Он вообще очень хороший человек, и Майки вот очень давно знает с давних времен. Вот как вообще тренироваться с Хавиером вообще? Что можно сказать? Хавер, да, он такой очень хороший, можно сказать, мужик, вот, тренер. С ним всегда, да, я когда тренируюсь с ним, так бывает чуть-чуть более мотивирован, так как этот человек вырос очень много чемпионов, ни, одного, ни один Хабиб у него тренировался, Кармея, тот же вот Майк Сык у него тренировался, потом много бойцов, да, Веласкес, много бойцов у него тренировали. Когда такой человек тебе держит там лап или готовит тебя говорить твои ошибки, это бывает так. Yeah, uh, Javier is the man, and he's Tagir feels very motivated training with him because he raised so many champions, not only Habib, but also Cain Velasquez, Cormier, you, Mike, and many others. So he feels very motivated to train with Javier. I saw a recent video that the the guys were giving him giving him uh, a little bit of. Uh, He, they said he was cocky. He was getting a little cocky. Is, is, is mm. Humble Hav getting a little cocky over there with uh, with all this excitement? I think when he hit that over 400,000 uh, followers on Instagram, he, he he's changing now. Is this true or or is he are they just messing with him? Yeah, он говорит видел видео в Инстаграме, что кто-то называет коуча cocky. Это значит типа как гордый или такой, ну как сказать, да? Ну это подписчика получил такой чудо в себя поверил, да, так скажем. Вот это вы просто прикалываетесь или на самом деле так есть? Не, 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 это просто так шутим. А так очень простой человек. Когда я пришел впервые, да, туда в Акей, он сразу меня принял, сразу вот увидел меня, сразу мои ошибки, все исправлял. Очень простой человек. No, no, no. It's, it was just a joke. He's very simple. And yeah. even uh, Tagir remembers when he came to AKA, he accepted him very well. And he like started training with him and giving him advice on what he has to do, to like what he has to work on in his trainings. He's a very simple person. He's like the Habib of coaches, kind of like he, he's always been that way of not caring about the attention as much. And now he's becoming a big star. So it's it's probably yeah. exciting for him, for sure. It's always exciting for everybody. But he's yeah. he's never looked for that, you know, and, and, and I can attest to that because I've been there the whole time when, when he built all those stars that Tagir mentioned. And and he was never trying to be in front of the camera, trying to take over the interviews. He, he was never... It was never like that, so I I was just messing with him. But um, I got to ask you this because you guys train so different, so hard. It's such a different work ethic compared to a lot of fighters in the states and 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 everywhere else. What is your fight week like? Like, how hard do you train all the way to the fight? Because for me personally, I would always go real easy fight week. I've seen guys go really hard all the way up until the fight. What is your typical fight week like from now until next weekend? Вы очень усердно тренируетесь и Uh, ваши тренировки отличаются чем-то от тренировок там, в США, вот, uh, uh, в Европе. И uh, ну, ваша дисциплина, насколько вы работаете, как вообще вот, ваши тренировки построены, насколько загружены uh, ваши дни тренировками, как вы подготавливаетесь к бою. Он говорит, что, uh, допустим, он выбирает вот, в uh, неделю боя uh, и, ну, легкие тренировки делать. Uh, он знает людей, которые 
прям очень усердно тренируется последнюю неделю. Вообще, как, как у вас тренировки построены? Ну, я скажу, сегодня тоже у меня были очень жесткие спарринги, так как осталась неделя, но тренер, трен, ну, тренерский став решился, сегодня тоже нужно провести, я провел жесткий спарринг, завтра тоже у меня будет такая жесткая тренировка, и уже с понедельника такие легкие тренировки будут. А так, мы всегда, да, тренируемся, две тренировки у нас есть, бой, нет боя, мы всегда по две тренировки день делаем, и очень такие усердные тренировки. Как говорил Магомедович, надо быть всегда готовым, да, в любое время может нам выйти там, Видите, можно, нужно будет бой, и мы всегда будем готовы. А, uh, yes. uh, yeah, they, no matter like if they have a fight or not, they train two times a week, and uh, it's like one week before his fight, and today he had two times a day. You mean just to make sure that people don't understand you? Two times a day, you mean? Two times a day, yes. Two times a day, sorry. Two times a day, and even today, like one week before his fight, he had very tough sparring. And uh, tomorrow he will have a very tough uh, training too. <laughs> and yeah, this is what the coaches, you know, decided that he has to have it. And uh, like uh, Abdul Manap was saying, you have to be always ready. So they just stay ready all the time. Like no matter if they have a fight or not, they train two times a day. I assume that. I assume that. It's a winning formula and the same thing in Thailand. This is the land of Muay Thai and they just train all the way through their fights and they go through 300 fights and it's like they never stop. It's There's no like fight weeks and like chill chill out and, and rest and they just go through it. It's just a fight life. So I, I expected that. For the international fans that don't know who you are yet, um, that haven't followed the Russian organizations, what is it that you would like them to know about you before you fight next weekend? Like what would you like... like uh, What would you like for them to expect from you uh, on your first uh, UFC fight? Для своих международных вообще за фанатов из-за границы, так как немного знают о тебе за границей, что бы ты хотел им передать? Что им следует ожидать от тебя в предстоящем бою? Предстоящем бою? Ожидать только победы, да? Я иду туда только за победы. Я очень мотивирован. Я хочу выиграть этот бой и посетить эту победу моему легендарному тренеру Абдумалову Магомедовичу. Так что следите, я, иншала, постараюсь вас обрадовать. So he wants uh, his fans to expect only the victory of him, and uh, he wants to win, and he wants to dedicate his uh, victory to his legendary coach, Abdulmanab Nurmagomedov. Uh, yes, and just, just see, you know, just uh, stay in touch, follow. And uh, you will see, like, uh, you know, on 10th of October, his fight. Absolutely. I'm very excited for that. Other than Habib and your teammates, do you have any favorite UFC fighters now or, or fighters that you've looked up to previously that's kind of motivated you and inspired your style? Помимо Хабиба, естественно, и их ребят с команды, есть какие-то еще вот UFC бойцы, которые тебе нравятся, их стиль, их как они как бы дерутся? Да, мне очень нравится стиль. Кейна Веласкиса, Ромеро, ребята, да, борцы, и очень тут хорошо себя показывали и в ударной технике. Мне yeah. очень сильно нравится их стиль ведения боя. Yeah, like you heard, uh, he liked uh, Velasquez, Romero, mm -hmm. even guys are like uh, wrestlers, they have very good striking, so he likes them a lot. Yes. Okay. And then lastly, I want to ask you just to give your ex your closest to exact prediction, not with any strategic Uh, backing because I know you're training with Habib and y'all have a strategic plan, which I, I don't think is that secretive, but um, what is your your exact prediction for uh, Habib versus Gaethje? How do, you, how do you see that fight going down in your mind um, without giving any, obviously, any too detailed strategic information? Без каких-то деталей, без каких-то вот секретов, каких-то внутренних вещей, какой вообще твой э, прогноз на бой Хабиб Гаджи? Как думаешь, он пройдет, э, может закончиться раньше? Или вот, вот просто твое видение, как ты думаешь? Ну, я думаю, он пройдет, как и все поединки Хабиба, да? Будет такой прессинг, будет ударная техника, борьба. И как Хабиб сам говорил, говорит, что ну, где-то в третьем-четвертом раунде, я тоже так думаю, что Хабиб закончит это бой. Yeah, it will, he thinks it will go like every other Habib's fight. It's pressure, striking, wrestling, and as Habib himself says, he wants to finish him in third or fourth round. Yeah, yeah that's about right. That's about the consensus. <laughs> that's about what's going. That's what's going around. Um, listen, Tagir, it's it's been amazing to talk to you. Uh, I hope to meet you uh, eventually. 
And uh, I look very forward to your fight next weekend and your debut. I'm going to be rooting for you here in Thailand. I'm still living vicariously through you guys in, in, du in Dubai while well, you're in Dubai, uh, not Abu Dhabi. And, uh, and I wish you all the luck, sir. Ему было очень приятно, он тебя хочет увидеть, ну, пока в Таиланде, вот, э, желать всего хорошего, хороших тренировок, и он ждет твоего боя 10 октября. Спасибо, мне тоже очень было приятно познакомиться с тобой, Майк Сыг. Ну, спасибо. Thank you, it was nice meeting you too, Mike. Thank you so much. All right, Tagir Ulambakov, uh, another super nice guy. Very mellow, very laid back, like the entire group, um, but just a savage fighter. I love these guys. They are so awesome. They're such good people. Um, you know, like he was saying about Habibis, the whole group is like this. You know, I, I trained at AK. At the end of my career is kind of when Habib was coming in and, and Islam and the other guys, um, Abu Bakr. And, uh, you know, so I trained with them briefly before I, I was spending more time in Thailand. So... Um, I didn't spend as much time with them as the other guys on the team like uh, Thompson and Kane and DC and, and all the other guys. Um, but Hobbs training them all in Dubai and, and they're just such a great group of guys. It's, they train so hard. They have fun. They're very humble, uh, they're very relaxed, very chill. That was my first time ever talking to Tagir. I knew he was a longtime friend of Habib. I knew he was killing it in the Russian circuit, GFC, fight nights. He was doing a great job, and, and I knew he'd be making it to the UFC soon. Um, and it was an honor to – I should have said this during the podcast, but it was, uh, it was definitely an honor to be able to have him on the podcast and kind of introduce him to a lot of the international uh, fans that haven't heard from him or know of him yet. Um, because I think he's going to be a force. I think he's going to be a, a huge force in the UFC. The flyweight division is, is uh, a good division for him to start in. I, I also, as I've said before, have my own fighter coming in uh, here very soon, uh, Manel Cap, who's, who's entering this division. But um, between Manel and Tagir, and, and it's, there's going to be some interesting fights. It's going to be a, this, this, this division is going to be on fire soon. So... I look forward to seeing uh, how this turns out, and I'm, I'm rooting for Tagir. I hope he has a great fight. I love these guys. They work hard. They deserve it, um, and we'll see what happens. So I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Stay tuned for the rest. It's gonna, we're going to continue on with this. We're scheduling all these. Um, Mr. Kerbatov is doing really well helping with the translation. Uh, this has all been set up through Javier. Javier has helped uh, coordinate everything to make sure that we get as many of these guys on the podcast as possible. He's training these guys every day. Um, Kerbatov is also uh, responsible for helping get this going um, and, and making sure that we get the podcast going. And, I'm, and I'm, I was very uh, persistent on making this English and Russian without any cuts so that it's for both audiences. I want, I want the Russian dialect audience to understand what's going on and the questions just as well as uh, the English speaking uh, following because these guys don't do a lot of interviews and uh, so there's a lot of uh, Russian speaking fans that want to hear from these guys so I hope you you took a lot from it like I said I hope you enjoyed the podcast I hope I helped introduce this new young uh, prospect that's going to be making his debut here uh, next weekend uh, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, let us know if you have questions for the upcoming guys. I've already listed who's going to be on the show coming up. List the, the questions you have. What, what should I ask Islam, Usman, Umar, Habib? Obviously, there's a lot of you that want to know about Habib. And, and, and uh, I, I did a Reddit post, and there were so many responses on there. So, so definitely leave comments on YouTube. We'll be uh, looking at them, reading them. Uh, answering you guys, uh, taking any criticism, any support. Uh, we appreciate it all. If you're listening on the audio platforms, follow us there as well. You can leave reviews on some of those. Um, but anyway, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you next time.